Hello friends of photography. It's time again for a new video. As you probably know, the Canon EOS system celebrates its 35th birthday this year. On my homepage Aperture 1.4, I have already published an article about it, and provided a big comparison of all four original EOS models for you to download as a PDF file. Today, I would like to introduce you to one of these models. It is the Canon EOS 620. The second model, which was released in May 1987. Have fun watching the video, and of course taking pictures. I would be very happy about a like, and subscribe to the channel, then you won't miss any of my videos. Thank you. The Canon EOS 620 has been self-described as the high-end version of the EOS 650. It offered some improvements over the first model, the EOS 650, an illuminated LCD panel, one four thousandth of a second as the shortest exposure time, compared to one two thousandth, one two hundred fifty as the shortest flash exposure time, compared to one one hundred twenty five. Automatic exposure bracketing, with 3 frames and up to 5 f-stops difference. Multiple exposure option up to 9 frames. As well as, shiftable program AE. You only lose the depth of field automatic from the EOS 650. A good way, to get information about all Canon cameras and lenses, is the homepage, Canon Camera Museum. Here you will find a lot of information about the different Canon systems, no matter if you are interested in analog SLR cameras, with and without autofocus, if you want to know everything about the latest digital R models, or if you are more interested in a time travel, back to the 40s or 50s, and want to have a look at Canon's rangefinder models, here you will find your information. And of course, the site also offers information about the Canon EOS 620. Here are the full specifications of this groundbreaking Canon EOS camera. But now, I'd like to introduce you to the individual functions of this camera in detail. You'll see, it's easy to use, intuitive and much of it you've already seen on your digital Canon EOS models. On the left side of the camera housing is the main switch. This is where the camera is switched on. To do this, you have to turn the switch from the L, lock position to A. If you turn the main switch further to the right, over position A, you activate additional notification tones. These signal when the camera has focused. or when the exposure time is too long for freehand shots. If you turn the main wheel further to the far left, you will reach a green triangle. This is the full program automatic, the so-called panic triangle. Here the camera selects a combination of exposure time and aperture independently. The single AF, one shot, is activated, the film is transported one frame further, after the shutter is released. All other buttons that can influence the picture result, are locked. You can only check the battery status. After you have switched on the camera, you can select the various exposure programs, by simultaneously pressing down the mode button on the left hand side, and turning the mode dial, the camera remembers your last setting after it has been switched off. TV. The shutter speed is selected, the camera selects the appropriate aperture. AV, the aperture is selected, the camera selects the appropriate shutter speed. M, manual shutter speed and aperture selection. P, program automatic, the camera selects aperture and shutter speed. 
No matter which setting you use, all other camera functions can be combined here, in contrast to full program automatic. Exposure corrections, in the range of plus or minus 5 steps, are set by pressing the exposure compensation button and simultaneously turning the setting wheel. To get multiple exposures, several exposures on one negative or slide, you have to press the exposure compensation button and the mode button at the same time, and set the desired number, between 1 and 9, on the setting wheel. The two buttons below the display are used to activate the display illumination, and the selective exposure metering. With this metering method, only a 6.5% large subject area, displayed as a circle in the viewfinder, is used for exposure metering. The Canon EOS 620 offers interchangeable hand grips. As standard, this camera comes with a hand grip for connecting a remote shutter release. The matching remote release is called the Canon T3. The Canon 60T3 offers a cable length of 60 cm. Furthermore, an adapter for the use of cable releases has been manufactured. When buying these accessories, always look for the designation T3 to ensure that the accessory is compatible. The shutter speed ranges from 30 seconds to 1 4,000th of a second, in all automatic exposure programs. If you are shooting manually, you can also use the B bulb setting and keep the shutter open as long as you like, at least until the battery, a 2CR56 volts battery is required, fails. The shutter speed, as well as the aperture, is set on the central dial and offers half shutter speed or half aperture values. Adjustable aperture values are 1, 1.2, 1.4 1.8 2 2.5 2.8 3.5 4 4.5 5.6 6.7 8 9.5 11 13 16 19 22 27 32 Further setting options are hidden behind a small flap on the back of the camera. These include the setting of the film transport. S means single frame transport. After each shot the film is transported to the next frame. C means continuous transport with 3 frames per second. Furthermore, the self timer can be set. It has a lead time of 10 seconds. A countdown is visible on the display. This counts down from 10. In addition, a diode flashes first slowly, then quickly. With the yellow button, you can adjust the function of the autofocus. Single shot means that the camera focuses and holds the distance as long as you press the shutter release button halfway until you feel a noticeable resistance. In servo mode, The camera focuses as long as you hold the shutter release button down halfway. The first original EOS models, 650, 620, 600 RT, all offered a single central autofocus sensor. To focus manually, the corresponding switch on the respective lens must be set to the M position. The film speed is automatically transmitted to the camera. by the DX code on the film cartridges. Manually, 
The film speed can be selected by simultaneously pressing the AF and frame rate buttons, and turning the central control dial. The film speed can be selected in thirds between ASA, ISO 6 and 3200. If you are using a higher sensitivity film, set the film speed to ASA, ISO 6400, and additionally work with the exposure compensation. For example, the value minus 1 would mean that you would expose the film as 12800 ASA, ISO. Canon has also added bracketing to the EOS 620. The camera can take three pictures in a row, with correction values of 0.5 to 5 f-stops, with the center picture being the uncorrected one. I usually use a tripod and the remote shutter release for this function. There are three more buttons near the lens bayonet. The first one you see here is a prominent button. This is the release button for the lens bayonet. As usual with Canon, to attach the lens, you have to align the red dot on the lens with the red dot on the camera body, and turn the lens counterclockwise until it locks into place. A small unlabeled button activates the dimming function when pressed. The camera closes the aperture to the set value. In theory, this should make it possible to check the depth of field. In my opinion, however, analog 35mm mirrorless cameras are not suitable for this, because of their limited format size. If you want to shoot manually, but still don't want to do without the light meter, the camera offers a tracking function. The CL indicator shows you, that too much light is falling on the film for a correct exposure. By displaying OP, the camera asks you to let more light onto the film, either by opening the aperture, or by increasing the exposure time. If two squares appear, the camera believes that the image is correctly exposed. This function is particularly useful for very high contrast subjects, when you want to have full control over the exposure. Unfortunately, the degree of deviation is neither shown in the viewfinder, nor on the display. After insertion, the film is automatically transported to the first frame. The film speed is automatically read in by the DX coding. If the film does not have a DX code, ASA, ISO 100 is automatically set, with the display flashing, to indicate that the film speed must be set manually. After the film has been fully exposed, it is automatically rewound completely into the film cartridge. This serves to prevent unintentional double exposures, but is somewhat of a hindrance for the self-processor, as the film leader must then be manually removed from the film cartridge. Here's a quick look at how the shutter works in continuous shooting mode. At the end of the video, I would like to show you a view through the viewfinder of a Canon EOS 620. Clear displays, that are limited to the essentials. By the way, the screens are interchangeable, here you can see a crosshair screen. In my opinion, the Canon EOS 620 is the perfect entry into the world of analog autofocus cameras. It's robust, reliable, Light seals don't need to be replaced, as the camera doesn't use classic foam light seals, and it's cheap to buy used. This camera gets a clear buy recommendation from me. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.